Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a image to image guide using Leonardo AI. So if you want to learn how to create better image to image generations using AI, this is the perfect video for you. A little uh, kind of just message that I want to go ahead and state before we begin the video is that for the people who are just simply looking at Leonardo type stuff, the reason why I make stuff like this is so I can use it to make money. So I encourage you to look at some of my other videos. And the way I make money doing this is I'll create different images, post them on different products for sale, and then I'll make money off of those products for sale. So as an example, there's a website called Society6. I'll create different image generations that will go great on products for Society6. And then those products, people will find them and they'll buy them. I'm giving you guys like the 30 second base summary. There's a lot more to it, uh, but that's just a perfect example of how I make or, or essentially what I do with these images, right? So today, like I said, you guys clicked on this video. You want to watch a image to image guide. I'm going to show you how that's done. So what I like to do is obviously I have to first have my actual image. So I'm going to be using, and hopefully you guys can see this. I'm using a tool here, a Chrome extension tool um, called the Unlimited Images Plus Analytics tool. This tool is from botsandapps.com. So I'll just pull it up here. I am an affiliate. I'll leave my affiliate link in the description box down below. Uh, this is the tool. Okay. Um, I made an update about this tool update video. Uh, if you want to see that update video, I'll leave that link in the description box down below. If you're one of my consistent YouTube watchers. Uh, but yeah, I'll leave the link in the description if you want to check out this tool. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to first find an example of an image to use. All right. So let's say I'm in the mood to make a pattern. I guess you could say a cherry pattern. Let's actually search for cherry here. And, um, as I do, hold on, I'm going to turn this, uh, for just a little forewarning, guys, I'm turning the search volume off for now because I don't really need it for this tutorial. And I'm going to search for Cherry here. And let's see what we get here. Let's see. We have all kinds of different photos. Um, I think this is actually pretty cool. Cherry Blossoms, right? This is like the, the uh, flower behind the cherry. So I'm going to, let's enlarge that a little bit later. And then let's download a few more images. So here we have uh, more pictures here. This is actually good. This is good. I'll take these. And remember that the, the image to image conversion is you're utilizing different elements of that image. And we'll show you what those elements are. Let's go ahead and think of another keyword. Let's use the word, um, let's use the word, Thanksgiving. I know we uh, did Thanksgiving just passed. Let's go ahead and search for it as well. All right. So Thanksgiving here we have leaves. That's actually a good example. Um, and then we have we have a bunch of people partying. Maybe these pumpkins are good as well. We'll take that. Why not? So now we have a few images. We have pictures of pumpkins. We have pictures of cherry blossoms. We got all kinds of stuff. Now it's time to go in and start configuring our AI image generator, in this case, Leonardo, to go ahead and do this for us. So I'm going to click AI image generation here, and I'm going to just clear whatever it says here, right? And by the way, guys, the settings that I like to use is first I'm going to be using the fine-tuned model of Leonardo Diffusion. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because there's a lot of people who have the free account of Leonardo AI who might be watching this. And the cool thing about this is that it takes in as low amount of credits as possible with no other features enabled. So if you look here, I don't have alchemy on, I don't have prompt magic on, I don't have any of that stuff on. So we're, we're doing the bare minimum right now. And then here we have this button that says image guidance. And basically what I can do is I can take that image and I can upload it to Leonardo. So I could turn this on, right? And I could remove the previous image that I used and I could just drag and drop whatever image I'm using. So let me go ahead and pause this real quick and actually drag and drop an image for the start of this video. Okay. So as you guys can see, this is an image of, like I said, these cherry blossom that are pink type color, uh, like the flowers on the tree, right? The, the, the flower petals, whatever you want to call it. Looks really nice, right? I'm going to take this image 
And this is a, let's see here, it says, selected aspect ratio doesn't match the dimensions of the image. Match your output aspect ratio for the best results. So what they're saying is, this image aspect ratio is a two by three, right? That's really what they're saying. And for my image dimensions right here, to get the best results possible should be close to a two by three. If you look here, my current aspect ratio is 584 pixels by 512, which is kind of like a, almost like a four to a three and a half, like kind of like that's how it would look. So this is a basic one to one ratio. And I'm just going to go over here to aspect ratio and click two by three. So now it's a two by three. So now I don't have that warning right here. Okay. And right now, image image guidance is currently on. And if you notice here, if I go to my generation history, we have this box over here that says image guidance number one. And it shows here in image guidance number one, a strength for that specific image. So I can use a higher strength, I can use a lower strength. And I'm gonna actually show you guys the differences between the two so you guys can fully see what it is. But with that being said, uh, what I want you guys to do is I want you to look at the actual image and describe to the AI what the actual image is. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to write in cherry blossom, right? And that's, that's simply because that's what it is. Cherry blossoms and flowers, something like this, right? I could write petals here and let me go ahead and right click here. Let's see, petals. And let's just put a comma there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's just say I want this to be a pattern. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn tiling on. Do you guys see this setting here? I'm going to turn tiling on. And what tiling is, is if you want to create some sort of pattern that is seamless within uh, uh, Leonardo Diffusion, uh, excuse me, Leonardo AI, it will create an AI image that is pattern typed, right? And so I could take this image, and I can create a generation. Now, before I do, I want you guys to understand what you're seeing here. You're seeing a strength of 28. So essentially, we have a top of 0 0.90. We have a bottom of 0 0.10. And basically, the more strength there is, the more your output will look closer to whatever this is. If I move this up all the way, it's going to be very, very, very similar the whatever output to the image. I personally don't want it to be that strong. Let's just say I move it down to 20, right? Or tw let's say 25 because we definitely want some some color to it. We want some you know, some settings to it. Now it's time for me to add details to my prompt. So let's now that I've described what the actual image is, I can now go into it and describe more of my own details because that's what the AI is going to take into consideration. So let's say I type in the word ornate. Let's say I actually hop into my AI tool here and I pull up some details, right? So here we have like, for example, uh, we have the word lost in a galaxy background, t-shirt design, streetwear. I'm just thinking of random words. So we have hand-drawn illustration. We'll take that, right? And I'll add that here. And then let me go ahead and separate this and let's just look up for something again. Let's look for something else. A dynamic action scene featuring superhero, minimalist illustration, um, detailed illustration of a rose with a focal point, intricate patterns. Okay, let's type that intricate pattern of petals and leaves. Let's add this, right? So notice what I'm adding here. So I'm adding different things. We have illustration, intricate patterns of uh, petal, petals and leaves. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my color tool and I'm going to generate some random colors that I like. So let's see here. This pink is pretty cool. Let's use this pink color, this E2B8, whatever color that is. I'm going to go ahead and use, type in color and add this. And then I'm going to do it one more time. Uh, but I want something dark in this case. Let's go with something like this color, right? So I want to see elements of that, okay? And let's go ahead and hit generate. So now what we did was we generated two generations for the cost of two coins. And for a lot of people who are struggling with the amount of coins that they have, you could definitely do pretty well with this. So if you look at this pattern, this does not look too bad. It doesn't look too terrible. First of all, it was a fast generation. These look drastically different. Without making any changes very quickly, I'm going to set this to eight and I want to see what it can do for eight generations, right? And we'll just see what happens. And now 
after these eight come out, we'll get a better understanding as to what kind of creations can it actually be capable of creating. And you can see here in every aspect of my prompt here is alive, right? So we have hand-drawn effect, right? We have intricate patterns of petals and leaves. We have all of that. We have that colors, those different colors that we requested. We have all that. And they incorporate them in different ways. And they are tiled, right? Because we asked it to be tiled. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you guys some changes that you can make that will alter things. So for example, without me touching the strength here, I can change my guidance scale. So let's say I want this to be at a higher guidance scale. Let's say something like a nine. I'm going to hit generate before it wasn't a nine. Now, why does this matter? What does the guidance scale actually do? The guidance scale just means that I am telling the AI, right? that I wanted to understand what I'm saying more and apply what I'm saying more to the image. So if you look at this, now it's applying more of the color concepts, right? Now it's applying more of the art, right? And you could see when I wrote the word ornate, it's starting to come out just a little bit more in terms of the vibe of the design, right? What if I remove the word Actually, let's not even get into removals right now. Before we get into removals, let me increase the strength. Now that you guys have an understanding of what can come out once I increase the guidance scale. So you guys see, these are the results with a guidance scale of 25. Let's increase it by 10 points and let's hit generate. Let's see what can come out out of it. Now remember what we said about guidance scales. When you have a guidance scale and you increase the strength, it makes the images more similar to that of the original. So let's see. Let's see here. Boom. So you could see now a little more details. Well, what if we go up all the way to 0.5, right? Or actually, let's let's throw a Hail Mary here. Let's go to 0 0.60. Let's hit generate. Let's see how similar it will be to the actual uh, image, right? The photo that we downloaded. And you could see here all kinds of different stuff. And I also want to put things into consideration of how effective this could be in very particular situations. But look at this. Look at how amazing this is. You're getting a whole different type of result. In the beginning, it looked something, and I, I hate to say this, but almost like, like, a, like a pencil drawing, right? And I'm not trying to degrade it in any way, but look. Look how we developed over time. Look at what it was capable of. It seems like 0 0.60 makes the image almost look alive in real life. What if we took this and we moved it down to just like 0.5, right? Maybe that's a better answer. Let's see. And remember, we're creating so many generations. The nice thing about this is that the cost of the tokens is so low that you can create as much as you like, you know? Um, so there's a lot of opportunities here. So look at this. Look at this art. It almost looks like somewhat real life in a way. Let me go ahead and take this and decrease it even more. Let's go to 0 0.4 right? Or 0.39, whatever the case may be, right? So we're looking at this and we have all kinds of, all kinds of different art of different calibers. Like this image looks odd to me compared to this image. And once again, you can use these images for patterns. You know, if you're a seller and you watch some of my videos in the other platforms, you can do this. Uh, so you got a lot of different stuff here. So now that that's taken care of, let's try to now kind of change some things up. So let's just say I don't like this hand-drawn effect. What if I remove the word hand-drawn and I just write watercolor, okay? Watercolor illustration, something like this. If I do this, right, and I hit generate, remember, we're still at the 0.5 for what was here. How is it going to significantly change or manipulate the output of the image? There's a lot of things that could potentially change, right? So look at this. Now we have, some may argue, better results. And this is part of the game with the AI guys is it's all about experimenting. And sometimes you need to have the coins and the resources to do so, which is why I took the energy today to try to figure out a strategy for you guys that can potentially cost you as low amount of coins as possible or resources as possible. So now that that's kind of taken care of and, and we kind of see what's going on here, let's do things where we test different, you know, images and we see what the outputs are. So what I'm going to do is head over to the, uh, the image guidance and delete the image and then just upload a new one. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. 
Okay, so what I did was I uploaded this image of the pumpkins, right? And this image of the pumpkins is telling me that it needs a ratio, aspect ratio of a 3, 2, right? So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select 3, 2, just like that. Notice how that warning symbol went away, okay? So now that that's taken care of, I can also now, and I'm going to teach you guys a little bit more advanced, how to select different selectors for your image input. So here we have an, a simple image to image selection. And we can make future videos on this, but we have image to image, we have edge to image, we have edge to image alt, or alternatively, we have a normal map, we have pose to image, sketch to image, text image input. All of these have different functions, okay? And they're usable for different videos. I'll make different videos on them in the future. But with that being said, image to image is what you're going to want to use in the beginning as a beginner. There's different functions that do different things. Like I'll give you an example. Pose to image is imagine if you have a character who's standing a certain way, like in a pose a certain way, and you want to create your your idea of a certain character in the same pose, but you don't want it to use the same details of that image. Then you use simply pose to image instead of an image to image. Remember that image to image is going to use all the details in your image. So here what I'm going to write, and this is just a pile of pumpkins, right? I can go over here, delete all of this, and I could just simply list what it is. So pile of pumpkins, right? And that's simply what it is. So pile of pumpkins in various colors of orange or various shades of orange. That's probably better. Okay. And then what we're going to do is now we tell it the details that we want it to have. So first I'm going to write pattern. That's what I'm going to write. And I'm going to write green vines. Actually, instead of green, let's be more specific to it with a certain color code that we like. So generate palette. I like this green, I can use this green. So I'm gonna write color uh, vines on pumpkins, right? Just like this. Okay. And what we could do is we could type in Halloween vibe, or actually not even Halloween vibe, let's just type in fall season vibe, right? And then what we could do is go to this generation history and just see what comes out of it. So I'm going to go here into a 0.3 strength and I'm going to hit submit. Then after that, I'm going to hit submit on a 0.5. Then I'm going to do it at a 0.7, right? And we're going to see what comes out of it. So remember, I'm keeping my tiling here on. You don't have to keep it on. It's just simply what I'm going to do. And then what I'm going to do here, actually, let me add something to this. I'm going to type in watercolor painting right? Watercolor painting. That's what I'm going to add. And I'm going to set it to a four. So I'll hit generate four. And remember, this is going to create for me four generations at 0 0.30. I'm going to boost it up now to 0 0.50. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So 0 0.50. I'm not going to talk about what it came out with immediately. We'll go, we'll get into that in a minute. So 0 0.51, that's good enough. And then let's go over here to 0.64 and hit generate. And now let's take a look at some of these results. So we have this we have this, we have this. You guys can see the difference of what's going on here. Here, we have clearly what seems to be like a painting or, or not even a painting, just like a, like a hand-drawn type art type design. Here, we have something similar. This is actually a little bit more usable than something like this. This is not really usable in my opinion. Um, this is okay, but though if you really want to use this, Actually, I take it back. This is not okay. This does not look good. If you want to use this, you have to use the AI image editor that I've showed in a different video, which if you want to see, I'll leave a link in the description. And you can see here with this higher power type image, you could see now that it's just, um, this is just with more strength of the image. It's, it's clearly making it look disfigured the, to say the least. And then here, it almost looks a little bit better, right? Uh, but then again, it's still not viable in my opinion. So I think the best output for what we were looking for was this original. So you just saw a situation where, you know, it, it's not always good to increase this, the strength. Sometimes you saw here, like it was kind of a good idea and then other situations it's not. So let's go down to that 0.30 again. Let's actually go to like point 
let's go to like 0.22. That's good enough. And what we're going to do is I'm going to increase my guidance scale here to an 11. So remember, the guidance scale gives more emphasis to what's written as opposed to what's on the image. And the image is giving guidance to what's the, excuse me, the image guidance is giving more guidance to obviously the image. So let's go ahead and view these things here. So now we got all kinds of different results. And, and this is not bad. I could see an image like this for like a children's illustration book or something like that. This looks almost like a photography type image. Um, this image looks good as well. I would once again clean certain things up with the AI image generator, uh, image editor, excuse me. And once again, the AI image generator I've made, uh, it editor, I made videos on it on how to erase certain things and how to remove certain things and fix certain things. Things like this in the image would not exist if it was up to me. And, uh, you know, that I would, you know, if you want to see that video, I'll just leave it in the description box down below. This image is actually really good. This image is really good. Um, I like this image the most, though. I, I could use this for uh, desk mats, I could use this for aprons. I could use this for t-shirts even. I could use this for so many different things. I could even use it for Zazzle, believe it or not. A greeting cards, you know, invitation type cards. A lot of different things I could use this for. So, um, different opportunities for that. But that's good. You know, this is good. All right. So, let's go ahead and now take a, 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 a let's just say, an experimental shot here. And let's try to move this guidance scale up even more. Let's go to a 14 and let's see what comes out of it. Now, once again, guys, the reason why I'm doing these extremes is to show you guys what's possible with these outcomes. And it's pretty cool, you know, to see what what would happen. But um, interesting, interesting. So remember, we have the keyword fall, fall season. So it took that fall vibe and added some pictures of leaves. That's interesting. We have another pumpkin image here. We have another one here. This one's actually really good. Um, and this one is decently good. Uh, once again, certain situations this would work for. Um, but, you know, overall, it's not too bad. I definitely would clean certain parts up of the image. But that comes with the territory. Let's go ahead and now switch because I, you know, when we mentioned the fall leaves, I'm going to switch this pattern to my leaf pattern uh, or the leaf image so we can do something here. Okay, so now here I've uploaded these this this photograph of what seems to be just like a pile of leaves. And this pile of leaves is pretty much all the same color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it at a strength of 0 0.30, okay? And this is actually, let's start at 0 0.24, 0 0.24, why not? 0 0.24. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working at this. So I'm going to type in pile of leaves, fall season. Just like this. And I'm going to type in variety of fall colors. And I'm going to indicate what those colors are. We have orange, green. Actually, green is not really a fall color. Orange, red, yellow, brown. Okay. Um, I'm actually not going to mention brown because there's enough brown in the original image already. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in watercolor painting once again but this time let's draw some emphasis to it and let's set it up at an interval of 1.6 which is pretty drastic uh and let's yeah let's see what comes of it so just set that up now uh, i have to set up the image size what's the image size of this two by three so let's go over here and let's sit two by three and let me just for the sake of this video turn off the tiling here and let's hit generate and let's see what comes of it. And uh, once that's created, I, I definitely do want to see because, guys, like I said, you're not going to get it perfect the first time every time. It's all about experimentation, testing different things and see what can come of it. So you see here, here we have uh, all kinds of different leaves. This one is probably the best one based on the way they came out. Um, this one's OK. Let's test here by taking the image strength and moving it down to like a 0.14. Let's see if that does anything whatsoever. And I think it will. I think it will, but but uh, we'll see, right? So let's give that a second. And there you go. This one is a little bit better. Okay. View this. This one's okay, right? Um, instead of fall leaves, I, w I do want to fix something. I'm going to type in maple leaves. 
just like that maple leaves because i think the photos in there are from maple trees but we'll see um you guys know the maple leaf right it's like it kind of looks like that Canadian flag type leaf, something like that. So we'll see here. So there we go. So this is looking a little bit better, right? So we have the yellows. We have all that kind of stuff. Um, I can do an emphasis. I can create an emphasis for yellow. And let's let's go ahead and do this. Mm -hmm. Let's type in 1.4. Uh, 1 and then we'll go in with red and do the same. So let's do that. 1.4. And format properly. Okay, let's hit generate there and we'll see what happens. Now, mind you, at that moment, the only thing we changed was really the prompt. We didn't really change any of the other details. Um, not bad, not bad. This is definitely a little bit more of a change. And once again, this is a hard image to work with because it's just all one per one color pretty much. So I want to see what happens when we increase the guidance scale from 14 to 18. And notice how there's this like warning symbol and it says note that a high slash low guidance scale can produce unwanted image results. Uh, it creates image degradation. We recommend using a guidance scale at around seven. So if I use, if I brought it down to whatever they say, which is seven, and I hit generate, <clears throat> uh, we could see what happens. But th this stuff doesn't look bad. They could all be usable in certain scenarios, very, very specific scenarios. Um, if you were doing or you were trying different things, what you literally could do is just upload random images. I know not everybody's into that. But uh, you can see there's different things that you can do here. Uh, for the fun of this video, this is actually a nice one. I like this one. For the fun of this video, what I want to do is I want to test a different uh, model. Um, it might cost more tokens um, depending on the situation, but let's test it. Let's hit generate. So this is Dream Shaper V7. Okay. And before that, let's go to Diffusion again. But let's turn. Look at that. Same. Same. Uh, same, same, excuse me, uh, same cost on the tokens, different model, uh, but I'm pretty sure not all of these models are open to everybody. Uh, I think you have to have a premium plan. I could be wrong about that. I have a premium plan, so I'm not sure, but these look great. This looks phenomenal. If you guys are able to use something like this, I highly recommend you use it. In fact, I'm going to upscale it because I will use it, um, and uh, that's pretty cool. Let's, for the fun of it, try alchemy. Let's see what alchemy can do. And notice how the cost immediately rises to 20. Um, something that I hate about Alchemy is every single time I turn it on, it switches the sizing and it completely uh, just like I completely forget. And so that kind of happens a lot. Um, so let me switch this back to 2 3, create another generation of it. And then what I'll do is I'll turn Alchemy off, turn Prompt Magic on, and turn it into a. Let's just say a 0.5. Let's hit save. Let's hit generate. So prompt magic is a little bit more expensive than the regular. And then alchemy is the more expensive than even prompt magic. So it's more expensive than them all. And uh, we could see here, it actually did a great job. You know, it's not, it's, you know, it looks, it looks pretty good. Um, even, even in the, uh, with the, the, um, the horizontal structure, the vertical looks a little bit better. It looks more realistic, um, for sure. And, of course, you can make different things in your prompt that will give it the indication of a little bit more, like, handmade type stuff. And look at this. So this is with prompt magic. And prompt magic didn't didn't really do as good of a job, in my opinion. It could, But you can you work this for certain situations. Like, I can see this on a Zazzle product or even on a Redbubble apron or something like that. Especially, you're going to make a customization. But, yeah, guys, this, this is a lot of cool stuff going on here. Um, so, if you want to see more videos like this, let me know. Uh, but this is Image to Image with Leonardo AI. I'll leave a link in the description, like I said, to learn how to edit some of these images with AI. Um, like the AI will edit it for you. Uh, like I said, like certain things that you can erase from images, edit certain things. If you want those uh, videos, I'll leave a link in the description. Check them out. And of course, if you have any video suggestions or videos that you want to see, let me know as well. 
I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Peace out. Bye.